It was just another day at school with the teacher lecturing on and on about who knows what. The windows were on the other side of the room, too far away to take my daydreams outside. The pencil in my hand with teeth marks and eraser bitten off from previous days of boredom. On my desk were smudge marks where I had doodled and then rubbed them out. The notebooks and markers inside my desk had been organized and reorganized several times already, so the only thing left was to pretend to be interested in the timelines and charts on the walls. I start humming and wondering why I can't have Pop-Tarts and fruit roll-ups for lunch like the other kids. Who is humming? asked the teacher. I snap back, back into reality and into silence. Who would be stupid enough to actually confess? Whoever is humming, please stop. She eyes, her eyes scanning the room. The class is as silent as a mouse. Only those sitting near me know the truth. Giving the class one more chance to speak up, she continues with her teaching. I glance at the students around me, all looking forward, hands in their laps or on top of their desks. How can they just sit there and listen? With a sigh, I continue my observing of the fascinating charts of the math tables, kitchen measurements, and letters. Why can't it be recess already? Why can't we have recess all the time? A few heads turn, a few heads near me turn to look at me. How had I not known I had started humming again? I swallow my thoughts and stop humming, but it's too late. Who is humming? The teacher stands up, placing her book aside. Her eyebrows raised means this is this just became serious. Who is humming? She asks with frustration. What was I thinking? How did my hand just raise itself? I glance at her, then put my hands in my lap. The only sound in the room is the click of her pumps as they move as we walk around the desks, hollow and threatening. With one final click, she is standing above me, hands clasped behind her back. Didn't I ask whoever was humming to stop humming earlier? Yes, I answer, twisting my plaid skirt between my fingers. Why did you keep humming then? She asks agitatedly. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> I don't know. I feel the eyes of my classmates nervously glancing at me and one another. I never got in trouble. I never flipped my card or sat out at recess. I never got called out by the teacher. This was a new sight for them, probably very entertaining. Fine, let them judge and make fun of me. I didn't care. Do you want to get in trouble? She asked, tilting her face towards me as if it were a challenge. Sure, I respond with uncertainty. She opens her mouth and then closes it. Well, what was I supposed to say, yes, and look like a complete idiot, or no, and try to get out of trouble when I already openly disobeyed her? Either way, I had it coming for me. I was banished to the hallway, standing, standing against the wall as my punishment. The hallway was quiet and empty of kids. I tapped my toes, the sound echoing to the opposite end. At the other side of the hallway, another tapping sound responds to mine, although it keeps tapping, coming closer. I look up and realize those steps belong to my mom. Should I say something or keep quiet? She raises her eyebrows as she passes me. That usually means she's frustrated. But wait, is that a slight tug on her lips? Is she laughing at me? Before I can decide her reaction, she looks away, walking past me, shunning me. I know there would be a lecture later on. That was the downfall of having a parent who works at your school. They know and see all. Many years, many years later, I brought it up to my mom, and she admitted looking away because she thought she would bust out laughing at seeing me in the hallway. Sometimes it is better to listen to authority when they tell you something the first time and not be stupid and continue to disobey, although it did make a funny memory.